Well, it's almost summer here in the United States, and that means children and adults, too, are participating in more outside activities. Unfortunately, summer fun also can have increased risk for craniofacial fractures and trauma. This issue features a trio of articles highlighting different ways to analyze and treat these injuries. That's why today we are taking a closer look at the demographics of and the surgical solutions to craniofacial trauma. The first article addresses sports related injuries in the pediatric population. In this retrospective review, the authors found that the sports most associated with pediatric craniofacial injuries were not what you might think. American football and hockey were low on the list. The top offenders were baseball and softball, accounting for almost 45% of the injuries. Joining our discussion today is editorial board member and craniofacial expert Ed Luce. Why were these typically low impact sports more likely to cause craniofacial trauma? The sports of football uh, and hockey uh, use protective headgear at all times. Almost universally in baseball, batting helmets are required, but once out in the field, the, the defensive position, uh, uh, helmets uh, or any other kind of protective uh, headgear are not, uh, are not used. That may not be necessary at, at a more uh, sophisticated and, and accomplished level, but uh, at the juvenile or elementary level, uh, as this paper describes, a common mechanism of injury is to be struck in the face by a thrown or batted ball. So perhaps the time has come for a universal implementation of protective headgear for children who play the sport of baseball and softball. Many studies, including our next manuscript, indicate that mandibular fractures are the most common pediatric facial fracture. This article investigates the demographics and outcomes of 215 pediatric mandible fractures to provide a definitive treatment recommendation on this complex and demanding procedure. The authors found that this type of injury was most commonly caused by bicycle accidents. But in children over 12, violence and sports related injuries were also significant causes. So what else? Did they find out it? First, perhaps uh, to no surprise, uh, the older children sustained multiple fractures, commonly a parasympathetic on one side and, and the contralateral condyle, while the younger children, uh, particularly those less than age six, sustained condylar head and condylar neck fractures. Uh, second, more aggressive therapy, open reduction internal fixation, which utilized in the older children that is those 12 years or older. To some degree, and not unexpected, since those, cho those children tended to have uh, more severe injuries. The final article investigates the management of another difficult craniofacial trauma, that of facial fractures that are associated with open globe injuries. In cases of trauma with high velocity projectiles, which can include anything from metal or glass in a car to hockey pucks and baseballs, the surgeon is poised with a treatment dilemma. How to treat multiple disparate injuries and priorities, including healing of the fractures themselves and minimizing chances for permanent blindness. These authors retrospectively investigated 99 patients with 105 open globe injuries and found out that 79% of the injuries resulted in blindness. What did the authors conclude? The authors in this paper examined the outcomes at a busy level one trauma center. The vast majority, 80% uh, or more, of these patients who sustained uh, an open globe lost vision and a, and a high percent, 60%, lost the globe either primarily or secondarily. Extremely high risk factors were those of penetrating injuries and or injuries involving both the anterior and posterior portions of the eye. Orbital fracture repair should not be uh, diverted or delayed in this group of patients. Thank you, Ed, that was very insightful. When you or your children are playing this summer, please take the proper safety precautions. Should a craniofacial injury occur, 
This trio of articles will make it clear that a patient is in good hands with a plastic and reconstructed surgeon.